P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's round up time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna rise far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills, the wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Well, sir, the first meal of the day is breakfast, buckaroos. And breakfast is sure to be mighty good if Mom has a supply of post cereals on the shelf. Check with her about it, will you? You know, and so does she, that you can count on anything bearing the brand name post. Well, the desert just out of Paradise Valley has warmed up considerably the last few weeks. And that means things can happen mighty fast out there. Strangulation. This is real. I wouldn't... Real uh, nuggets. Mrs. McKenna, I They are right here in the desert sands. All a body has to do is to reach down and pick them up. Uh, Mrs. McKenna, this discovery must be kept secret. Secret? Secret, you say? Huh. You don't think I've been prospecting gold 35 years and not know a strike has to be kept secret, do you? This is just between you two men and me and Amos. Amos? Who's Amos? Amos is my husband. Dead. Died just three months after we was wed. Accident, Mr. Harris. And ever since he left, I've been feeling him pulling for me, trying to lead me to where the mother load was. And now I guess he's done it. Hmm, okay. <laughs> we'll take Amos in on this. As I said, Mrs. McKenna... Now I can get a monument for him. A big granite monument. His name carved right into the stone. And all around it, doves with ribbons in their mouths. I'll buy an iron fence to go around his grave, too. And then the coyotes won't be running across it no more. And I'll get a black silk dress to wear when I come to water the pots of uraniums that got planted there. Oh, I tell you, it'll be good to be rich. Uh, Mrs. McKenna, I know you appreciate You the... don't have to call me Mrs. McKenna. <laughs> I'd like it better if you used to say Desert Mary, like other folks do. Or even Mary. All right, Mary. You know how important keeping our secret is. Oh, of course, Mr. Weber. <laughs> Strangulation, it's going to be hard not to talk now that I'm rich. <laughs> she won't tell. Oh, no. <laughs> Can't you see her when she gets to town? Opening that dirty old poke, spilling out her five nuggets. Strangulation, boys. I'm rich. <laughs> Boss, this is going to be the biggest deal we ever put over. Why not? Isn't the sand loaded with gold nuggets? And didn't we put them there ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll give her a few hours start, Harris, so she can spread word. Yeah. Then we'll go on into town and uh, see if we can do any business. <laughs> The best black silk dress in the house. Shiny black with a white collar and, and white cuffs, too. Hi, Mary. <laughs> and they gotta be lacy. Full of little holes with stitching all around them. And the dress has to be. Mary, just... I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place. Oh, don't worry about the cost. I'll pay as these. Look here, real nuggets. Found them out on the desert floor. All the body has to do is stoop down and pick them up. This just. Put them away, Mary. Now, look. Why don't you sit down and have a bite to eat now that you're here? Well, yes. Uh, I might like a bite of store food now that I'm rich. No more beans and bacon now, eh? <laughs> you just sit right down. And I'll get you something special. Don't go away, Mary. Where are you heading, Dale? To see if I can find Roy. You boys let Mary alone, you hear? Yeah. Uh, Mary, uh, it looks as though you made a real strike. Um, where boats on the desert did you find these nuggets? Oh, Mary, can you come here a minute? What's that? Well, sure, Dale. I was wondering what happened to you. 
Roy Rogers wants to talk to you for a minute. Howdy, Mary. Say, we hear you struck it rich. Roy, Joni, you see that burrow tied to the hitching rail? I spent 20 of my 35 years prospecting, chasing him down. Mm. <laughs> but listen to this, you mountain canary. I'm rich now. I'm going to hire me a boy to hold rope on you all night long, every night. <laughs> Mary, Roy wants to talk with you. <laughs> I wish there was some way of magnetizing him to make him stay home. Well, what was it you wanted, Roy? I wondered if you'd located your claim yet and filed on it. Why, I, I guess not. Well, let's do it right away, then. Sure. And while we're there, I can introduce you to my partners. Have you got partners, Mary? Two of them. Mr. Weber and... Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Harris. They just bought the land out there, and they happened to stumble onto me as I was picking up a nugget. They made me a partner. Said they'd have never known there was gold on their land except for me. What do you think, Roy? Fishy as a mackerel barrel. We'd better get out there. Oh, come on, Mary. I'll untie your burrow. Roy unties Desert Mary's burrow, then he, Dale, and Jonah mount their horses. The customers in the restaurant are watching greedily. And as the little party rides away to post a notice on Mary's claim, the customers step outside to get a better view. Well, Roy Rogers riding off with Mary shows there must be something to her talk. And that desert's a big place. Don't seem quite right for a woman like Desert Mary to get it all. A local person ain't got no real use for a lot of gold. Boys, it comes to me there ought to be enough for everybody. What do you say we follow them? See where they go. Oh, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. I imagine you were speaking of Mrs. McKenna's discovery of Desert Mary, I, I believe you call her. You know something about it? Yeah, we know all about it. Mr. Harris and I happened to own the land where she found the nuggets. We bought it just two weeks ago at a government tax sale. But understand this, Mr. Harris and I would be the last persons in the world to say that there's any appreciable amount of gold located there. Uh, would you consider selling the land or uh, part of it? Why, yes, I, I might. Well, for I'd a like... price. Well, 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 okay, Mary, here's a note to the claim recorder. Take it to the county land office. They'll know what to do. Don't you stop anywhere on the way, Mary. Uh, I won't. Get going here, you sawed-off imitation of Satan. Hi there. Hi. We'll see you later, Mary. This doesn't look much like gold country to me, Roy. It ain't gold country. Well, the only thing, Mary was so sure she found the nuggets here, and, well, it can't hurt to file a claim anyway. If there was gold here, somebody had found it long before this, especially laying right on top of the sand like Mary says it was. Hey, what's the matter? What'd you pick up, Jonah? Gold nugget. You're kidding. Laying right there on top of the sand. It's gold, all right. The real McCoy. I reckon we'd better look around here a little. Maybe we'll change our minds about this not being gold country. Here's another. That makes 12 altogether, besides the five Mary found. I think we'll make a report to the sheriff. I wonder where he is. Well, early today, he was sitting outside of his office watching flies try to find a hole in his green door. Mm. And I ain't seen him since. Are you two speaking yet? Yeah, we speak, but we don't exactly stomp the ground and slap a leg when we see each other. <laughs> and a woman was the cause of it all. Uh-huh. And he's about run his course as far as Dorothy May is concerned. How come? Well, the other evening, she asked how did I think it'd be if she touched up her hair so it'd be red. Uh, 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 not a dye job. Just a touch-up. Mm-hmm. What'd you say? Well, before I could say anything, she... <laughs> she gave me that fetch-me-a-sandwich smile and says, One man I know is so old-fashioned, he promised never to call again if I did. <laughs> well, I knowed right away who that was. The sheriff. Sure. So I laughed. Hmm, sneered at a man so backward that he didn't like this colored hair. Ooh, ooh, trigger. She sighed then and says she was glad that I wanted her hair red, but, uh... She guessed she couldn't have it done till next payday because she was uh, kind of short of cash. That looks like the sheriff coming. Well, I asked her point blank. Did the old-fashioned fella mean what he said when he promised not to call? And, and Dorothy May looked out at me from under them long lashes, and she says, Yes, Jonah, I'm afraid he did. And right then and there, I whopped $5 out of my pocket, and I says, Little girl, uh, always called her little girl, you see, you just go get your hair ready as red as you want it. 
Well, she grabbed that money. And she said, say, ain't this old tin star coming? If you hadn't been so busy talking, you'd have known that a long time ago. Oh, oh, here, Howdy, Sheriff. Here, Roy. There were a couple of strangers in town an hour ago selling parcels of this land. Well, that's interesting. I'll say. Folks was buying like there was a shortage. They disappeared before I could get to talk with them. Old, you move slow. Selling land, that clears up a lot of things. Yeah, they could have seeded the land, Roy. Yeah. It's the easiest thing in the world. A promoter throws three or four hundred dollars worth of gold nuggets on some worthless land, lets somebody find them, and he's got a land boom started. Convolution land boom. Mount up again, Sheriff. We'll go looking for those two slickers. Hey, what have we got coming here? These may be the two we're looking for, Roy. And they're strangers, all right. Not staying at the hotel, either. I wonder if I like red hair myself, come to think of it. Well, how do you do, gentlemen and lady? You weren't looking for us, were you? Uh, we were wondering the same thing. It's our land just beyond the flats. There seems to be a sudden desire on the part of the public to own some of it. We thought. Oh, that... is uh, that land for sale? Not anymore, it isn't. No. You're uh, Roy Rogers, aren't you? Yeah. And the sheriff. I'm sorry, but we've sold the last square foot. I understand gold has been discovered out there. And that may have had some part in making folks want it. Probably so. However, we made it very clear to buyers that we were selling worthless land, not gold claims. I think we'll just take you two along. On what grounds? The law in this country says specifically... Vagrancy, that... suspicion of robbery, suspicion of bunco. That... You haven't a case, and you know you haven't. Let them go, Sheriff. If they leave before their land deals are out of escrow, they won't get the money. Well, uh... That'll hold them a week. And in a week, we should be able to find out if they're behind any crooked deals or not. <laughs> What is it, Roy? What's the matter? Buzzard circling. Convolution. Yeah, I see him. That can mean only one thing. They're waiting for something to die. We'd better see what it is. Roy. Quick, Roy. She's hurt. What is it, Mary? Uh, who did it? Shot. They shot. Now give me your canteen, Dale. Let's see if we can save her. Howdy, Fords. Things sure have been jumping at the ranch. And that's just when a feller needs a good supply of energy most. So take an old hand's advice. Tomorrow, when you roll out of your bunk, corral yourself a bowl full of that great energy-giving cereal, Grape Nuts Flakes. Why, two minutes after you polish off a bowl full of grape nuts flakes, their powerhouse whole wheat energy starts to go to work for you. That's the kind of quick energy you fellers and gals need. And you get it from grape nuts flakes because their two-minute energy has been tested and proved. And you go for grape nuts flakes sugar roasted flavor. It's plum delicious. So ask Mom to get you grape nuts flakes, the two-minute energy cereal. Look for Roy's picture on the front of the package, you hear? For two-minute energy, what'll we eat? Grape nuts flakes, oh boy, they're a treat. Yes, the two-minute energy has what it takes. So rise and shine with grape nuts flakes. Roy, Deal, and Jonah, riding back to town with the sheriff after visiting the land where gold has been discovered, find old Mary in the desert, wounded. Although badly hurt, she is conscious and takes a drink of water from Dale's canteen. There. That'll make you feel better. Am I... Am I gonna die, Roy? Why, of course you're not. I was... I was worrying about dying. It'd be a dirty trick to play on me now when I could get the monument for Amos and a fence to keep the coyotes off. Well, how are we going to get her home? Put her in my saddle. I'll get up behind her and walk trigger the few miles that are left. I was still in town... My two partners come in. They were selling the land. They'd made me a partner, but I, I saw them selling the land. When was oh, Just it? listen, Sheriff. I said something to them, and one of them, uh, uh, Mr. Harris, he led me away. He took me to the edge of town and told me to get out. I thought so. And later I saw them falling. 
And then I felt a shot and I stumbled. They rode up, but I lay there pretending to be dead for fear they'd shoot again. I'm changing my mind. Jonah, you and Dale take Mary back to town. Sure. Who's that, Roy? The sheriff and I are going rattler hunting, and right now. Roy and the sheriff ride out to the spot where Weber and Harris were last seen. There they search the sand carefully, looking for signs that will tell them which way the two men have gone. Right now is when we could use bullet. Think it'd pay to ride back and get them? No, let's not give these two any more time than we have to. Here, this looks like something. Roy finds a trail. Both men mount their horses and begin following. It leads them deeper and deeper into the desert. There they see a cabin. The trail of the suspects leads directly to it. Whoa, 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 whoa here, Trigger. You better be careful, Roy. They're in the cabin, more than likely. Come on. No cover for us between here and there. They have all the advantage. Except these guns. Funny they aren't showing themselves. They must know we're here. Probably waiting until we get right up to them. Not a sign of life. Horses out back. Yeah, I noticed. Stand to one side. I'll push the door open. Even as Roy reaches out, the door opens. Weber stands in the doorway, smiling. Gentlemen, this is a surprise. Where's your partner? We're well, representing the law. Come in, won't you? Weber steps back. Still cool, still smiling. Roy and the sheriff enter the cabin. Now, what can I do for you? Is your name Weber or Harris? Weber. Gordon Weber. Where's Harris? He went for supplies. I don't expect him back before evening. Now, I'll wait, Sheriff. You take this hombre on in. In where? You're under arrest, Weber. On what charge, may I ask? Attempted murder. <laughs> and whom did I attempt to murder? Desert Mary was He's found. baiting the Sheriff. Frisk him. I'll keep him covered. Put those hands up. You won't find a gun on me. In fact, there aren't any guns in the cabin. Neither my partner or I own a weapon. Stand quiet! And as far as trying to murder anyone... I'm rather surprised you gentlemen would place confidence in Desert Mary's word. It's quite apparent that the woman isn't right mentally. I'm presuming, of course, she is the one who's accusing him. Get him, Harris! As Weber shouts, Roy instinctively turns. Behind him, Harris. Harris brings his gun butt down on Roy's head. At the same time, Weber springs, knocking the gun from the sheriff's hands. Roy has been surprised. He staggers momentarily, and Harris closes in, flailing him without mercy. Roy is backed against the wall, trying to pull himself together. Weber crashes his fist on the sheriff's chin. He does it again. The sheriff goes down, knocked out. Weber hesitates as though deciding whether to help his partner or to escape. He makes up his mind, runs to the back door and outside. Harris is distracted for an instant by Weber's cowardice, and at this instant, Roy sees his chance. Harris drops to the floor, unconscious. Sheriff, Sheriff, come on, wake up. Oh. Sheriff. Uh, well, uh, well, what, where, where? Weber got away. No, Harris was what? outside, I guess. He came up behind me, and Weber jumped you at the same time. Uh, you feel all right? I will, in a minute. We'll sit down while I rope Harris. Uh, then we'll start riding again, and this time we won't be quite so polite. This ought to hold you for a few hours. You're making an awful lot of trouble for yourself, Rogers. By your own word, you got no witnesses. Do you think anybody's going to believe a loco like Desert Mary? Get those feet together. When she gets up to testify, the only thing that happens is Mary goes to the loony bin and we go free. We? You're still partnering with a man who ran out on you, huh? I'll take care of him in my own way. Hey, listen. Time and... That sounds like Bullet. It is Bullet. Dale and Jonah must be bringing it. They're getting here just in time. And with Bullet along, we ought to track Weber down fast. Let's get out there. Here we are, Dale. Jonah. I'm mighty glad to see you folks. Going to need you, Bullet. Yeah, she... Say, Tin Star, well, you know you got a big dirty spot on your chin. That author is not dirt. Slugged, huh? <laughs> Roy, we found out something you should know. The money isn't in escrow. What? Weber and Harris had a deed to the land, and everybody was satisfied that the title was clear, so they agreed to hand over the money to them instead of placing it in escrow. Oh, that's great. Oh. Weber must have the money on him then, Sheriff. I've searched Harris. You've got one of them? Yeah, but Weber's still loose. Bullet, old boy, you and I have some work to do. Let's get started. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, uh, tickles me to death, Tin Star. You getting slugged. Better not be too tickled, Jonah. You're riding with us this time, and we're after a bad hombre. <laughs> Looks like he's heading for Bingtown. Maybe he has friends there. Friends or no friends, we're taking him. After an hour's hard riding, Roy and his party reach the outskirts of Bingtown and slow their horses. Bullet continues to run ahead, evidently sure of the trail. He leads them through the town, along Main Street, and toward the railroad station. Oh, oh pull in a little. There's the horse he was riding, standing by the freight depot. Now we'll have to go to work. Bullard's been following the trail by the scent of the horse. The poor cat's probably hiding in the freight depot. Who there? Who? How about the train? He might be on it. Dale, go in and ask the station agent if Weber bought a ticket, will you? Hurry. You bet. Most back things liable to pull out. Maybe you'd better search it first. Dale will find out. You come with us, Bullet. We may need you. There ain't going to be no picnic searching the freight depot. All them crates and boxes... Feller could hide behind any one of them. That's a chance we have to take. Just don't jut your tender jaw out too much, Teen Star. Hey, the train! Dale! Oh, Dale! Roy, the station agent didn't sell any tickets. Okay, thanks. Better stay where you are. We'll find him if he's in here. Roy, quick, here he is! Come on, quick! He came out of the freight depot. I'll wear the authorities in the next town, Roy. Never mind that. Trigger's here. We'll catch that train and Weber with it. Hip your trigger. Come on, boy. Catch that train. Say, ever notice how fast good news travels? Well, that's just the way the word's getting around about wonderful post sugar crisp. Yes, sir. Folks just love that delicious new cereal treat, and they want to tell everyone about it. You will, too, once you try it, because Post Sugar Crisp is fun to eat all day long. Tomorrow morning, you just pour out a heaping bowl full of that sugar and honey-coated puffed wheat. Add lots of cool milk or cream. You don't need sugar. Post Sugar Crisp is just sweet enough. Mm Mmm-mm. And how you'll love each delicious spoonful. If you go for between-meal snacks after school or at bedtime, try Post Sugar Crisp then, too. It's so delicious and satisfying. Or when you're watching television or studying, just reach into the Post Sugar Crisp package and enjoy it as is, just like candy. And say, it's good for you, too. Wheat for nourishment, the sugar and honey coating for flavor, plus quick energy. No wonder Post Sugar Crisp is such a favorite. You try it. Get Post Sugar Crisp right away. Look for the package with the three little bears on the front. Roy and Trigger race along the right-of-way after the departing train. A dangerous course with uneven ground, loose cinders, hidden holes. Bending forward in the saddle, Roy helps Trigger in every way to attain greater and greater speed. The distance between them and the train is diminishing fast. Come on, Trigger! A little more, fella! A man, Weber, appears on the back platform. Roy is within ten feet of the train now and coming up. Weber draws the gun he has obtained from somewhere and fires. The shot is wild. Roy's speed increases. He swerves now, rides up alongside the back platform, edging Trigger close to it. He reaches out. He grabs the railing, holds himself up, then aboard. As he does so, Weber lunges. I'm taking you, Weber. You've had your last chance to use a gun. That'll do it. Get to your feet while I see if I can stop this train. Because you're going back to Mineral City, mister. Mary, we're just sorry as you are that you didn't make the big strike you've been dreaming about. It's all right. It's all right. But you'll be well again, and real soon. The doctor gave us his word on that. Wait a minute. That's not all. The folks who were after the land have their money back. And they've also learned that it doesn't always pay to be greedy. Here, Mary, they want you to have this. What is it? Money. You're to buy the monument and the iron fence you wanted. I... Oh, strangulation. Amos will be glad of that. He'll be awful glad. Now he can rest. And so can I. (laughs) 
You get some rest right now, Mary. Come on, Roy. Okay. Strangulation. Aim is so sharp. Jonah! Hey, what are you doing here, Jonah? Feeling like a heel. What's the matter? Oh, I think I'll go home, prop up my bed springs, and just lay there till kingdom come. Ain't no more use going on. Oh, the idea. Shame on you. You and Dorothy May haven't had trouble, have you? Well, I told you, Roy, about how she wanted to tint her hair red. Mm-hmm. Well, she went and done it. Say, she went and done it. Now the school board is kicking over the traces to a fair ye well. Uh-oh. The school board doesn't like it, huh? No, on account of some of the older boys. They say if the older boys have a red-headed teacher, they won't be able to keep their mind on their work. And Dorothy <laughs> May has got to change it back. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, and she's blaming me for the whole thing. Says I was the one who persuaded her that she ought to be a redhead. Says I needn't call on her no more. Yeah, even sent the manuscript of my book back. Oh, I tell you, Roy, I am about at the end of my tether. Uh, Dale, do you suppose we could find a man typist to do Jonah's book? Well, I'm sure we could if we looked. Well, then let's do look. (laughs) I think that might save an awful lot of heartaches. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Osh Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Nestor Paiva, Don Harvey, Gwen Delano, and Tim Graham. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then Who cares about
about the clouds if we're together. Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you till we meet. 